In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, in today's gospel, in putting Jesus on the spot, the Sadducees were unexpectedly rewarding, rewarded with a firm declaration of the truth of the resurrection. By proclaiming God to be the God of the living, Jesus strengthens the resolve of all who place their trust in him and who hope in a share in the eternal life of God. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you raise us to the fullness of life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will appear in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all diversity, adversity, that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourged by, the, scourged by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, what do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, you accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are, that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, it is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope that God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified as it did among you and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you in the Lord that, that what we instruct you you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees who deny the right, that there is a resurrection came forward and put this question to Jesus saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers the first married a woman, but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, the children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a story once told about a couple, married couple from America who traveled to the Holy Land for a vacation and pilgrimage. And during their stay there, the husband fell ill suddenly and he died. And so the wife was faced with a very difficult decision. The people there explained that we can send your husband's body home to America, but it will cost you many thousands of dollars more than if you were to bury him here in the Holy Land, in this beautiful land of Jesus. She thought a moment and said, I think I want to send him back to the United States because I heard that 2,000 years ago, someone was buried here in the Holy Land and he came back to life again, and I can't, just can't chance it. <laughs> Our readings today perhaps are inviting us to reflect on this mystery, not only of immortality, that is the belief that a part of us, what we call the soul, lives on after death. That's what many people of many faiths believe, but we as Christians also believe that one day our bodies and souls will be reunited again and be transformed into a resurrected body like the resurrected body of Jesus himself. Of course, many see this as somewhat as foolishness, but you know what? So did many people of Jesus' day as well. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the body at the end of time, 
But in our gospel today, we learn that the Sadducees didn't, nor did they even believe in life after death. And so as we heard in our reading, in order to test Jesus and really to make fun of this belief in the resurrection, they come to him with this outrageous scenario of the seven brothers who had the same wife to see what he would say about who would be the lucky husband in the life to come. But Jesus, always patient with us and with them, he makes it very clear that God is the God of the living, not the dead. And not only is there life after death, but indeed there will be a resurrection from the dead as well. And then Jesus mentions something that often bothers people, especially those of you who may have lost a spouse or a loved one. He says that our relationships with one another in the next life, including marriage, will be different. But we need to remember, brothers and sisters, that heaven is a place of complete fulfillment. Heaven is never less, but rather more and much more than the joys and the blessings that we experience in this life. So we will surely not only know one another, but surely the love and the happiness we enjoyed and, and shared in this life with a spouse or friend or family will only be multiplied in heaven beyond our wildest dreams. And surely we will be able to hug and hold one another again, just as Jesus surely did with his own disciples after his own resurrection. Does that sound too good to be true? It is true, brothers and sisters. So let us believe and do so with our very lives in the fullness of God's grace, pressing forward to that goal and promise ahead of everlasting life, knowing that our God is a God of the living and a God for the living, who sent us his son that we might have life and have it to the full, not only now, but in the life to come. And so let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord invites us to place our hope in him let us therefore bring our prayers and petitions before him with confidence and with trust. For the church as the body of the risen Christ here on earth, may God give us fortitude as we faithfully and boldly proclaim the truth of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in leadership positions, may the Holy Spirit bless their efforts in promoting policies that benefit the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all of us, may the presence of the Lord in our everyday lives pro perfect and protect us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the fullness of the eternal life in the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord 
Loving God, hear these prayers which come from our hearts and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending on your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.